Hi, I'm Janice Corrales, one of the founding lawyers at Corrales Law Group. We want to put out a series of short videos on information and immigration for our clients and for the internet at large to give out Im um, immigration information. This week it just so happens that USCIS has announced that they're going to change the waiver process and allow for provisional waivers. And our phones have been ringing with a lot of questions. And this has happened because a lot of people are very excited and they have questions. Now, this is really big um, for us and we've been waiting for it for a long time. A lot of people don't know that when they come into the country without permission, when they then marry a U.S. citizen, they don't automatically get their green card or residency. Uh, they have to go through a process that we call consular processing, where they have to go back to their country of origin and apply from there. Um, this turns into an issue a lot of times because when you go to that interview, you have to first prove the relationship between you the, or the person that doesn't have documents at that time and the qualifying relative, which is usually a, a parent or a spouse. So let's say it's a spouse situation. So you go to your interview and you have to prove that the relationship's real. It's not marriage fraud. You know, you give your wedding album, your papers, certificates of children being born, all the documents that you live together, your joint bank accounts, joint taxes, all that. Once you give all that to the official and you prove that it is a real re legitimate relationship, the official says, okay, well, we believe you, this is a legitimate relationship, but we have a problem. You came into the United States without permission. Um, and not only that, but you live there unlawfully. So now you have accrued a lawful presence, and this means if you, you know, accrue more than a year, which most people have in this situation, then you now have a 10-year ban. You can't go back into the United States for 10 years, and you're now in another country. Ah, this is an issue, right? So, but then they tell you, okay, well, we do have a process that's called a waiver where we pardon that, basically. So, in order to obtain this waiver, you have to prove that there is extreme hardship to the U.S. citizen or U.S. resident relative that is asking for you. In this case, we're using, you know, husband-wife situation as the example. So, you have to prove that, let's say, your husband is going to suffer extreme hardship. They don't really care about the hardship of the person who's in another country who's being petitioned. They care about the U.S. citizen or resident and how much extreme suffering they have. So now that you're in another country and you have this ban on you, you have to have your significant other gather all this, all the evidence of their extreme suffering. And this isn't for the weak of heart because obviously you have to have extreme suffering to begin with. So there's going to be some extreme suffering in the situation. And then you have to gather all the evidence, gather up a big package with all the evidence and proof that, oh my gosh, you know, this is a really bad situation. And then you have to send it into the consulate office for, you know, for them to adjudicate it. So this takes a while. On top of that, the officers have huge piles on their desks that they have to go through. So then, all while you're in your country of origin, uh, you have to wait till the officers go through the pile, get to your particular waiver, which are usually pretty long, goes through it, either asks for more evidence of hardship, or grants it, or denies it, but, you know, we're going with the, they grant it or ask for more evidence, and then you're able to return to the United States. But for that whole time, you're in another country, and this can take months at a time. So this is months where people are having to sustain two households, where um, they're separated from their significant others, from their babies or children, and it's, you know, it's a really taxing process that, like I said, it's not for the weak of heart. It's, it's really difficult. Like, we try to walk people through it, and we hold their hands through the process, but it's, it's not an easy process. So, USCIS has now changed this process, they've announced. What they're going to allow for is provisional waivers. And what this means is that before you even go to your country of origin for your interview, you're allowed to go ahead and put your waiver together and send it in and have the officers decide it before you go to your country of origin. So you still have to go to the country of origin, but this process should make it so that you only have to go for a few days instead of a few months. That's going to save people a lot of money and a lot of extreme hardship, right? Um, so this is really exciting for us, and we're really excited about it. The USCIS is going to be updating their website as, as it gets closer to March 4th, which is the day the process will go into effect. As they update their websites, we will be updating you guys through these videos. Um, any questions you have, you can go ahead and email our office or call us. Our consultations are always free. And any questions that we receive um, in large amounts or that we see repeated, we will try to make a video to go ahead and answer it for um, all of our clients and anyone who needs information. Thank you for watching.